Well, praise the Lord. God bless you, each and every one of you. Let us stand up right now and open up in prayer. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, we rely on your word to speak to our hearts today. Father, I thank you that your word will bring forth strength and edification and, and exhortation, that we will begin to acknowledge and see ourselves as you see us, that we will not allow the enemy to come in and to distort what you are building up. God, we humble ourselves. We yield to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I release your blessings right now upon this people. I release the anointing that lift burdens and destroy yokes right now in Jesus' name. Let every heart, Father, be subject to the higher power. God, we humble ourselves before your mighty hand that we may exalt you now in due time. We cast all of our cares upon you. And God, because we know that you care for us. And so, Father, we thank you for this time. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Amen. And thank you all for joining us today. You may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. I believe that God is in this place today. And I believe that God has given me a word to share with you. Amen. And, uh, and I believe that God is going to touch our hearts. We've been dealing with the area of faith on Wednesday nights, and we're going to continue along that line today. Today, I titled the message, We Are Called to a Lifestyle of Faith. Amen. We are called to a lifestyle of faith. Amen. You see, God is a faith God, and, and we are created in this image and after his likeness. If we're going to accomplish anything in this earth, first of all, we need to learn how to walk by faith, because faith is a lifestyle. It's not just something that we practice once a month. It's something that we live every day of the month. Amen. It's something that we live every day of the month. And so we've been dealing with this area because God has placed it in my heart to equip you with faith to so that you will be uh, relying totally on him and not looking to the situation and circumstance and allowing them to overcome you, but that you begin to overcome them. Because, see, faith, when you're operating in faith, when you're walking in faith, you, I mean, you're in, the, you're in a realm where, where the natural thing doesn't, doesn't, what won't, is not, will not hinder you. Because, see, you're not living a life, you're not living your life according to the natural realm where all the natural physical laws and everything governs you from a natural standpoint, because once you rise up to that spiritual standpoint, when you rise up in the, in the area of faith, you rise up to a spiritual uh, a place where, where time is even, is even uh, 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 dominated by, by, your, by, by, by faith. Amen? Time is dominated by faith. Amen? I mean, faith, faith is a powerful, is a powerful uh, force. It's a powerful force and it resides on the inside of you. Amen. Well, we know that faith is on the inside of us. And, and, but, you know, a lot of people don't understand how they got it. When did it come? Or, or how do they use it? And this is why so many people are not being able to operate in faith. Because, see, they don't know when it came available for them. Amen. And, then in, and not only do they not know when it became available for them, they don't know what it is. And don't know how to use it. Amen. And so God want me to see. We, we, we're starting back at the basics. Because see the moment you get born again. Oh my God. Welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus church. <laughs> For Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. And I believe he's going to be glorified through this message today in your hearts. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Did everybody have a good day? Everybody have a good day today? Anybody didn't have a good day today? <laughs> huh? You pray for some people today? Mother. Amen. And the and the and the, and the young man mother died to yes. when? Uh, yesterday. yesterday at one hundred and five year old. Hundred and one year old. Amen. 
Jesus prayed for healing cases. You never took medicine and others and got healed and never took drugs after she, ever since she delivered. Well, all right. So that means that's a chance for everybody in here to live a long life. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. We go, we go, we go, we're going to believe that we're going to believe that our our God is going to cause our faith to rise up to that level where we can where we can live that long life because the word of God promises long life. Amen. Promises long life. Well, let's get into the word. Hallelujah. Well, we've been like I said, we've been talking with faith uh, last Wednesday night. We talked about uh, God has called us to a God has called us to a uh, to to uh, 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 to walk by faith. He calls us to a, a, a walk by faith. And today we're saying that God is calling us to a lifestyle of faith. Lifestyle of faith. Amen. And I believe that this lifestyle of faith that God is calling us to is going to be uh, uh, very, very good that we hear this message because, see, God is bringing us to a, a higher realm. And are you, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you ready to, are you ready to walk higher? Are you ready to, to take a, a, another step in the things of God? Amen. 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 Well, we're going to start at uh, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 1. I want, I want to look at Romans chapter 1. Let's look at verse number uh, 6. Start with verse number 16. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16. I'm going to get my... Uh, uh, my reading glasses on now because we're going to be doing some reading today. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse number 16. Amen. And it says, turn it off. Yeah. Turn it, uh, the tape player. Just hit, hit the stop button. Well, come up here for a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this is exciting that um, um, teaching and faith because without faith is impossible to please God and we do have to walk by faith. You know, faith is coming by the hearing, the hearing the word of God. Also, faith is activated by love. So, you know, you can uh, claim it and you can... Uh, um, you know, speak for it, but if you have no love, pretty much you will not have faith. Because the basic of faith is love. And faith is activated by love. This is what the scripture says, that faith will activate by love. And if you are the child of God, which is you are, right? Amen. That love of Christ is already in part in us. So we just have to learn to activate that love Amen. toward some, you know, people or toward situations. And, and the same thing with all of the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have to learn how to receive like, for example, you have some situation in your life and you, you know, God is the Jehovah Shalom. He is the God of peace. And so that peace can activate in your life toward that situation. do not have to be all, you know, in an anxiety and all of that because that is not God. What is God is the God of peace. He is the Jehovah Shalom. The same thing with love. As we receive Jesus Christ, and we know that God is love. Amen. Hallelujah. And everything that is not love is not God. So when we receive our Lord as our personal Lord and as our personal Savior and become a followers of Christ, we receive what? We receive love of God. Hallelujah. And that is a good news. Christ is love. 
God is love, and everything what is not love is not God. Hallelujah. So, Father, I lift unto you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, every person who is here tonight, those who is listening this broadcast, those who is watching this broadcast, we thank you, Lord God, for the love of Christ. Continue to, Father, be bigger and larger and activate in, in your people's hearts, Lord God. Father, you said in your word the love is cover multitude of sins. Love is not exposed. Love is not a gossip. Love is not a backstabbing. But love is covered the multitude of sins. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you will bring the conviction of the Holy Spirit up in those, Father, who is refused to walk in love, who is continue to walk in the flesh. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We will receive that love, Father, that you already impart in your people's hearts. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people in this ministry, and Father, those who is watching this broadcast, we thank you, Lord God, that your people will choose to walk in love. And they choose to walk by faith because we know that faith is activated by love and father we thank you lord god what you're gonna do for this evening for this message what pastor will deliver to us and we receive that word that word will not return void father and we thank you lord god that the healing will come through love Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ will manifest in your people's hearts. And, Father, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I remember that um, we used to visit some people who, you know, maybe not feeling good, sick, and a bed, and all of that and sometimes uh, one of the first things people likes you know when you come and visit someone a lot of times people want that you hold a hand yeah. how many of you experience that you go to the hospital and you visit someone and you hold that person's hand because you know when you hold someone's hand you you express yeah. your love you express your compassion toward that person and, and love and compassion bring healing. You know, how many of you know that sometimes when someone is not feeling good and you are sitting at the bed of that person with a prayer and supplication, you also, you know, touch that person. You also said, it's going to be okay. And, you know, just express that compassion toward that person. Well, the same way we can express the compassion toward each other how much more we as the body of christ can express the compassion toward each other hallelujah god is god of love god is god of compassion god is god of forgiveness hallelujah and you know the carnal nature the old nature the nature before christ is the nature of the flesh Nature of sin. Nature of sin likes to gossip. Nature of sin likes to talk about people. That is the carnal nature, is the nature of sin. And the Lord wants for us to turn away from these wicked ways. And, and the Lord is saying, return to me. I am in you. Let me abide in you and you abide in me. Let the Christ will arise in us in such a way like never been before. When people even think about us, they will think Christ. Hallelujah. That is a good news. When the people even think about us, they will think about Christ. Because that, that love will be continued to, you know, Extend over the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is love. 
and pastor are going to talk about today about the faith and so you receive that word what the man of God will speak to to us today by the spirit of the Lord because God wants us to walk by faith God wants to to overcome the enemy God wants us to to leave the past behind God wants us to go toward our future because God is the God of destiny God is a God of purpose he has a purpose he has a destiny for us and all of the gifts and the whole of the Holy Spirit will be activated through the love if you don't have love you cannot even activate the gifts of the Holy Spirit amen, and without amen. the gifts of the Holy Spirit <laughs> God is good we the, the gifts continue of the Holy Spirit, to walk by faith. The faith and the Holy Spirit and the love, without it, you don't have nothing. Wow, love is powerful. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, glory to God. Sorry about the interruption there, but my wife, she, she's a very powerful young lady, and she knows the Word of God, and she speaks with love and compassion, and I thank God for her. Amen. Now, as we were going, let's go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse number 16. And it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Now notice what it said. Unto what? Salvation. Unto salvation. To everyone that believe it. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Hallelujah. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Therefore, I'm going to... I'm, 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 the gospel to me is living a life of faith because this, because this gospel is all about faith. Everything that Jesus did, he did it by faith. He walked, he walked, his lifestyle was a lifestyle of faith. Amen. His lifestyle was a lifestyle of faith. And this is what God is calling us to. See, we've been called to imitate our Lord. We've been called to imitate our Savior. Amen. So we've been called to a lifestyle of faith. God is taking us, to a, God is taking us beyond human reasoning. God is... A, God is God's about to take us beyond human reasoning. Because human reasoning, uh, uh, when they start talking about faith, the human reasoning, is, it, it just it just get all out of whack, you know? Because it goes beyond human thinking. Amen? God going to take us beyond human reasoning and human thinking through his word. Amen? Because God is a supernatural God, and I believe that God wants to take us to a place where we will experience his glory, his strength, and his power. Will you see... We, we, uh, we won't do nothing. We can't do nothing without faith. Amen? Amen. And so he said, verse number 17, he said, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, knows what it said, from faith to faith. Amen? From faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, that's, who God, that's the way God sees us. That's how God sees us. He sees us as the just. Amen? Amen? How does, why did he see us as the just? Because we accepted his son Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. And then when we did that, we received what? Salvation. With salvation, oh my God. Do you know all the benefits that come with salvation? See, but you got to understand, to obtain these benefits that come with salvation, you got to have faith. You got to have faith. See, when you, when you, when you just say if you drive to the to Boston Market <laughs> and you... You order you a good you order you a plate, and then once you get your plate and you and and, and you come back and say, uh, but I thought, do bread come with this? <laughs> you know, you 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 go out, you get you you get your you get your you get your plate and you walk away. Then you look in your bag and see what's in there. You saw what you ordered, what what and everything wasn't in there. So you come back to the window and say, but don't this come with bread? Well, that's the same way when you when you receive salvation. Don't I get healed with this? Don't I get delivered with this? Do I get faith with this? Do I get do I get uh, uh, prosperity with this? Everything that you get in faith, it come through salvation. And everything you get in salvation, you receive by faith. Amen. God wants you to understand your faith journey is going to take you to way beyond human reasoning. Human reasoning. Amen. Because when we look at, if we if we look at it, we see that uh, in John chapter fourteen verse twelve, in John chapter fourteen verse twelve, Jesus said, "Very, very, the, the very the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to my Father." Well, how are we going to do the greater works 
if we don't have faith to do to, to start out, we gotta have faith to start start somewhere. Amen. We gotta have faith to start somewhere. And remember when when uh, Jesus when when Jesus come walking on the water and he and Peter looked at him and said, Master, if it be you bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, Come. Jesus said, Come. Well, you know, Peter couldn't walk on the he couldn't walk on the water from the natural standpoint, so he had to walk on the word. The word of God had the power to hold him up. When God releases faith in your heart, it releases the power to sustain you. Because faith is a, is a spiritual force. And that spiritual force is on the inside of you. That spiritual force is on the inside of you. Amen? It's on the inside of you. And it's just, it's just ready to be released. Just ready to be released through you. Glory to God. Amen. And now, uh, Jesus, Jesus used faith to pay, to pay his taxes. Jesus used faith to pay his taxes. In other words, that in other words, Jesus, everything that he did, he used faith to do it. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Turn with me to Matt, uh, Matthew chapter 17. I'll show you in the Word. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 24. Amen. Matthew 17, verse 24. Jesus used taxes. Jesus used faith to pay his taxes. Glory to God. Chapter 17, verse number 24, and it says, Matthew, yeah, verse number 24, and when they were come, and when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, do it not your master, what, pay tribute? He said, and he, he said, yes. And when he and when he and when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, "What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take customs or tribute? Of their own children, or of strangers?" Peter said unto him, "Of strangers." Jesus said unto him. Then are the children free. Then are the children free. Amen. In other words, if you are in the king's household, then you didn't have to pay taxes. Why? Because you was of the family, and because you was of the family, you was free from tax. Boy, I wish that was, I wish that, I wish everybody could understand that. Amen. They was free from tax. But notice what it said in verse number, verse number 20, uh, Verse number 27, nevertheless, lest we should offend them. Now notice, now, notice what, now notice what Jesus is saying now. Notice what Jesus is saying. Because see, God, Jesus is telling him what to do. But notice, Peter has to have faith to activate what God is telling him to do. He has to release his faith to, to, you know, to be willing to do what he's asking him to do. Notice what he said here in verse number 27. Nevertheless, we should... We should, of, we, nevertheless, lest we, lest we offend them, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish, the first cometh up, and when thou, notice what he said, when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that, listen, that take and give unto them, for me and for thee. Now, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, see, everything that Jesus did, he did it by faith. He didn't, in the natural, have the money, but because he was living a lifestyle of faith, he could speak and things would happen. He spoke to Peter. He told him what to do. And there was a fish waiting on Peter to come. Amen. He said, Peter, I want you to go fishing down to the sea. And the first fish that come up, the first fish you catch with that hook that you, that you, that you, that you cast out, open up his mouth. And you're going to find money in there, in that fish mouth. Take that money and go pay your and my taxes. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that, was, that was no... That was no uh, uh, no figment of his imagination. Peter went and caught the fish and did exactly what was said. Amen. Now, you think that's something. 
Well, when Jesus was walking on the water, now, now notice what Jesus was walking on the water. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and Peter said, Lord, be you bid me come to you on, on, on the water. And as he walking on the water, oh, my God, he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sing. Now, notice what Jesus said. Oh, ye of little faith. Little faith. Amen? Little faith. Glory to God. Amen. Turn with me to Mark chapter 9. I'm going to show you something else. Amen? Mark chapter 9. Amen. Now, we're going to go... We're going to go somewhere with this lesson tonight, so y'all just bear, hold on. Mark chapter 9, and I want you to look with me in verse number 19. Amen. In Mark chapter 9, look at verse number 19. And it says, are you there? Yeah. Verse number 19. He answered him, and said, O oh, faithless, now notice what he said now, generation. O oh, faithless generation. You know, he, he's not just talking to Peter now. Notice, who's he talking to? He's talking to everybody because he's talking to the whole generation. He's talking to everybody. O oh, what? Faithless generation. He's talking to everybody. See, see, God is going to bring us to that place that we will have confidence. Confidence in him. Amen. He wants to have confidence in him. Amen. How are we going to have confidence? Well, if we, if we, if we, if we are, are faithless, then that means we are not, but we're, not, we're not believing God. We're not walking by faith. We're not living a lifestyle of faith as he is. But, and so he said, oh, faithless generation. Now notice what he goes on to say with that. Notice what he goes on to say. Faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? In other words, how long are you going to walk without confidence in me? Huh? You see that? How long shall how long shall I be with you? Or how long before you begin to build up confidence? How long will you begin to trust me? How long will you begin to understand who I am? Glory to God. Glory to God. And so he says, verse number nineteen. Verse number 10, and he answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Amen. Bring him to me. Amen. How long before you have confidence? How long before you recognize who I am? How long before you get, before your, before your heart begin to recognize who I am? Open your eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And so we see here, we see here that in a uh, 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 verse, in, 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 uh, now let's go back again. Let's go to, no, let's go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. You got Mark, then you got Luke. Amen. Luke 22. Amen. And let's look at uh, Luke 22 and let's look at verse number 32. Luke 22, let's just start verse number 31. Verse number 31. Amen. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you and that he may sift you as wheat. But I, but notice what it said, but I have prayed for thee. Remember I just said a minute ago, how long will we, God is waiting, for, God wants us to, to build up confidence in Jesus. He wants to have faith in Jesus. He wants to have faith in what Jesus is doing because if we have faith in what he's doing, that means we can do it too. Amen. Amen. We got to have confidence. No, and you see what we're talking about right here in verse number, verse number 32? He said, but I have prayed for thee that, now notice it, that thy faith fell not. That thy faith fell not. In other words, I want you to have confidence in me. Amen. I want you to have confidence in this word. I want you to know that what I'm sharing with you is able to bring you out of, uh, out of, out of the gutter, is able to lift you up from the spirit of poverty, is able to bring you out of the hospital totally healed, totally whole. Amen. Glory to God. Is able to restore your, your heart, your mind, your will, your emotions, everything that the devil has, has distorted. 
concerning you, I'm able, to, if, you really, if you just believe, it can be restored. Because all things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible to him that believe. And so he says here in verse number, 20, verse number 33, verse number 32, he said, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail thee, fail not. And when thou art, now notice what he said, when thou art converted, I like to say it like this, when thou art convinced, <laughs> you see that? When thou art convinced or strengthened, amen, when your faith is strengthened, when you are convinced and, you're, and, and, you're, and, and, the, and your faith has come to be strong, glory to God. Now, go strengthen your brethren. <laughs> Show them what confidence you have in me. Show them how, how, how much you believe me. Show them how much you trust me. Glory to his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is calling us to a faith, a faith lifestyle. God has called us to a faith lifestyle. See, when, when we believe God for something for one day. But see, but what are you going to do by tomorrow? And what are you going to do by the next, next week, next month? You see, God has called us to a lifestyle of faith. Not just a moment of faith, but a lifestyle of faith. And I mean God wants you to begin to, to, begin to see things as he sees them. He wants you to begin to see yourself as he see you. Because he created you in his own image. And he gave you the authority over all the work of his hand. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And as you begin to take what God has given you. And as you begin to walk in that knowledge. As you begin to walk in that wisdom. As you begin to walk in that strength. As you begin to walk in that authority. You're going to see yourself rising up. Hallelujah. And, every, and, and you know the devil don't want to let you go. He don't want to let you go. He's still trying to hold on to you. He's still trying to hold on to you. Jesus came walking on the water. He says to Peter, come. Then Peter saw him. And he just looked at him for a little bit. And he started walking. Then all of a sudden, he took his eyes off of him. Many people have started out with God strong in faith. Many people have gotten have, have come out and they begin and they heard the voice of God, they heard they heard the call of God, and they begin to walk out on the things of God. But in the midst of their going forth, they begin to experience adversity. They begin to experience uh, turmoil. They begin to experience uh, 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 the, the enemy coming against them using people and the people as the people begin to come against begin to go to come against him because he because he had put because he loved the people now the people thought turned against him now he and that even that what is it what is the enemy trying to do the enemy is trying to stop you from advancing the kingdom because he brought you to a place in faith. Now God, because God brought you up into a place in faith. Now there were some people coming here that wasn't sent from God. But sent by the enemy with one purpose. That was to, that was to uh, 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 attract, uh, uh, to uh, uh, distract you from your calling. To try to break, to try to destroy the anointing upon your life. To try to. To try to take your name and, and begin to mar it into mud. Amen. But then God began to do something different. God began to do something different. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's a, there's a spirit come upon you. And you have to stand still. You have to just stand still. And you have to stand still. Even when it looked like you just want to just throw in your hand. You just got to learn how to just stand what God told you. Amen. 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 You just got to learn how to stand. Regardless of what it looked like. Because the same God that called you. The same God that, that have, have set you in position. Is the same God that will bring you through. But you got to learn. How to walk by faith and not by sight. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, 
abundantly above all that we ask a thing according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. And so we see that we see that, that God is born us to have confidence in Jesus, or you might say confidence in the word. In the word. Amen. Confidence in the word. Amen. Because it's the word that's going to put you over in life. It's the word that's going to bring you to that place of deliverance. It's the word that's going to bring peace to your troubled heart. It's the word that's going to heal your troubled mind. It's the word that's going to bring you to that place of financial freedom. It's the word that's going to set you on a solid rock that you will be established for all eternity. Mm. And so we have to stay on that what God has given us. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And so faith is the way that you got to, you know, God have put so much out here for us as his children. But faith is the only way that we're going to be able to get a hold of these things that God has for us. Now, well, how do you, what are you talking about? I don't even know if I have faith. So what are you talking about? The Bible said, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if God is demanding that I have faith and I don't understand where it come from then I have to go into the word and find out where it come from when you begin to operate in faith when you begin to understand what faith is that means you begin to understand where it come from faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God it didn't say faith coming by having heard. It says faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. We are on a journey to recover everything that the devil has stolen from us. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, you probably want to get ready because everything that the devil has taken from you is coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Your, your, your mind is coming back. Your health is coming back. Your strength is coming back. Your finances is coming back. Everything that the devil has stolen, God is going to read. He's going to cause you to go back and take it. Amen. You're going to recover it all. You're going to recover it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that without faith is a lifestyle. Faith, I like what Dr. Cyril said, faith is a fact, but faith is also an act. Amen. Faith is also an act. What do you mean faith is an act? Well, turn with me again in your Bible. Turn with me again in your Bible. And I want to take you to uh, another scripture that I believe that's going to that's gonna help you to see what we're talking about. Look with James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Like I said, faith is an act. In James chapter 2. Look at verse number 14. James is right after the book of Hebrew. Go to the book of Hebrew, and the next book right after the book of Hebrew is James. James chapter 2. Okay? And look at verse number 14. Are you there? It said, But every man... Oh, I'm going to look at chapter 1. Oh, I know, I know it sounded wrong. <laughs> okay, verse number 14. What do it profit a what do it profit my brethren? Though a man say he had faith and have not works. Now we now 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 remember I said faith is an act. Faith is faith is an action word. Okay. But faith is also an is also a, 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 a powerful force. And when you know where did where did where where did it come from? 
when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it came and lived in you. No one has more faith than the other. For God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That means you don't have more faith than I have, and I don't have more faith than you have. What, 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 what it is that, that some people have learned how to operate or walk in their faith or to develop their faith, that's why they're able to have more things because they, they're able to walk by faith because they learn, they learn a little bit about it. They understand what it, what it is and, how, to, and how, to, how it works. Amen. But notice what it says right in verse number 14 again. What do it profit, my brethren, though a man say he had no faith, he had faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? Amen. Can faith save him? What do you think? Amen. Look at verse number 24. Verse number 24 says, You see then how that by works man is justified and not by faith only. And not by faith only. Verse number 24, I mean, you see that? Verse number 25, Likewise also when, like, likewise also was the Rahab, the, the harlot, just, justified by works when she had Received the the messengers and and had and had sent them out another way. Verse number twenty six. For as the body without the spirit is dead, notice what it said. As the body without the spirit is dead. See right here, you see a body. You looking at you looking at the house where the real me live in. The real me is the spirit. Now, if my spirit just, just, just all of a sudden decided he want to go on, go on, leave this, leave this, this body, you know what this body is going to do? It's going to fall down. Amen. This body is going back, it's going back to the dust. Amen. Amen. Because the spirit that hope that, that makes this body what it is is gone. Amen. Amen. And so, notice what he says right here. Verse number twenty-six. For as, the, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith what? Without works is dead also. You understand that? Just say, if, if, if I'm, I'm, I'm a spirit and I live in this body. Now, my spirit get tired of standing and hanging around in this body. This spirit is just decided to hop up and want to take off. Then this body is going to fall down. Why? Because the life of the spirit. The life that kept this body standing is no longer in it. Amen. 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 Now, it's the same way with faith. Faith and belief works simultaneously. They work together. You got a coin. The first, the, the top side of that coin is faith. The bottom side of that coin is belief. Now, if one part is not properly working, then it, if, it's, if it's been all scarred up, you try to put it in the machine, then that machine won't take it. Why? Because it's all scarred up and the machine can't read it. Or you just gatch up the edges or something on that coin and you try to put it in the slot machine. It, it, won't, be able, it won't be able to read it. And I, I, when I'm talking about slot machine, I'm talking about Coke machine or something like that. I don't, I'm not talking about, the, you know, them. Ching, ching, ching. I'm not talking about them kind of slot machines. Amen. But that you, you got to be ready to, to you got to understand what I'm saying because see God is about to change your situation. If you get a if you get a hold of what God what God is saying to you right now, your whole life is about to begin to uh, 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 take a, a new heading. <clears throat> your direction is about to change. Directions of your life is about to change because see, you've been living your life, you've been You've been you've been just pushing your way through, and God said, "Now, now, 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 just just think if you didn't have to just push your way through, if you could just sit there and just rest in peace, knowing that what you are reaching for is coming. And how are you going to have that confidence? I have faith in God. See, when I have faith, I can rest. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to." Be, I don't have to try to force my way. Why? Because I believe that my faith is going to, is going to uh, uh, 
bring that what I desire into my life. Amen. Hallelujah. God has called us to a lifestyle of faith. And we have to get, we have to come to this place in our walk right now because, see, God is going to have to do something. How, so, so how, now, what is most important right now? To learn how to, how, 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 to, how to walk or to learn how to keep standing when you start walking? You need to learn how to walk. But once you learn how to walk, you need to learn how to keep standing while you're walking. Because, see, there's some, there's some strong winds going to blow up against you. There's some strong winds that are going to blow up against you. Amen. Peter walking on that water. Strong winds start blowing up against him. And he forgot what he was actually going for. And he started looking at the strong wind. We can't stop in the middle of our journey and begin to look at the circumstances. We have to stay focused on the important part. What is the important part? What God said. That's the important part. Because what God said is, and if he hadn't changed that, then you still have something to focus on. But if he changed it, then you have to refocus. But if he hadn't changed it, you don't turn to the left nor to the right. You keep focused and you keep speaking over that, what God has said. And don't talk against it. See, many people have started out and they were strong starting out. But soon as a situation started to occur, soon as turmoil started to try to come up against them, they began to allow the turbulence to speak more than what the original assignment than they had. They began to focus on those things more than focusing on what God has said. We cannot allow our circumstances or situation to override what God has said in our lives. In other words, see, the devil is just like the church of Israel. They in the land of Goshen. Now delivered and rose up, and God is saying, He's thinking that He's gonna He gonna deliver them right now with a natural from a, using natural strength. So he go and kills a man. And so now, fear then came upon him. Why? Because he went, did something, act out something in the natural. Talking about Moses. He went, act out something in the natural. So now, what he's doing now? He, he, fear has gripped his heart. So now he's on the run. He's on the run. Amen. And so he goes out into the desert and he found, and he come upon a, 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 a priest of Midian called, what's his name? Jethro. The priest of Midian. You understand what I'm saying? And now he, he, done, he done come out there and he done got comfortable and he done got him a wife. Amen. And now he's taking a sheep on the, on the backside of the desert to, to graze. Then all of a sudden, God called to him. And he looked and see the bush burning, and he said, I must turn aside and see this great sight. And so he goes up, and God speaks to him. And God shows him miracles. And God tells him, I want you to go back to, to Egypt and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, God's word has gone forth. Now, I can imagine what Moses was thinking when he got that assignment. How can I go back to Egypt? I just killed a man there. How can I go back to Egypt? I just fled for my life. Who's going to want to, to, to hear what I have to say, knowing what I've done? You know, 
He could have had many, many reasons why he shouldn't go. But when God done speaking with him, he goes and he pick his stuff up. He tell it, his wife and his, and his father-in-law that he had to go. And they didn't stop him, but they beat him. And as he went, Aaron met him. And as Aaron met him, he said, Hi, what are you doing here? God told me to come meet you here. But God sent me to, back to Egypt to tell Pharaoh. He said, oh, I know. He told me, to, what he, he told me what he had said to you. Now, 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 now notice. Now, you, you got to see the full picture here. Because, see, God is about to bring deliverance in your life. God is trying to bring deliverance in your life. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Exodus, chapter 3. Can you go there with me? In the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Because, see, somebody's going to be delivered. Somebody is going to walk free. Faith is going to penetrate your heart. Amen. Look at Exodus chapter 3. And I want you to look with here verse number 19. And notice what it said. And I am sure that the king of Egypt, notice what it said, will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. What did God say? Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Amen. But what did, what did the scripture say right here? Even though God said, let my people go, Egypt, Pharaoh, is not going to let you go. In other words, you are coming to face a spiritual force that is bigger than you in the natural. You got to believe that God is going to deliver you. And how are you going to do that? By faith. By faith. Your faith is going to bring you out. Amen. Your faith is going to bring you out of your bondage. Your faith is going to bring you out of your captivity. Notice what it says in verse number, verse number 19. Verse number 20. And I will stretch I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst of in the midst thereof, and after that he will what? Let you go. He will let you go. Verse number 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of all the Egyptians. And now oh my God. You see what God is saying? In other words, you're not just going to go out, but you're going to go out not sick, not broke. <laughs> you're going to go out in royalty. Hallelujah. God is going to read it. He's going he gonna to bring you out in royalty. Verse 21. And I will give the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Ye shall not go what? Empty. empty. Amen. Ye shall not go empty. Verse number 22. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourn in her, in her house. Jewels of silver and gold, uh, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil. Glory to God. Ye shall spoil the Egyptians. When God began to bring you out, when God began to set you free, when God began to bring you to that place of deliverance, <coughs> you're not coming out broke. You're not coming out with the curse. You're coming out with the promise. Hallelujah. You're coming out with the promise. Glory to God. 
There won't be no, no one sick among you. Amen. There won't be none sick among you. Look with me in Psalm number 105. Psalm 105. Psalms 105. See, I'm talking about a lifestyle of faith. I'm talking about a lifestyle of faith right now. Hallelujah. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Psalms 105. Are you there? Just about there? Yeah. Okay. Psalms 105. And look at verse number 37. Psalms 105, verse number 37. Now notice what it said. He brought them forth also with silver. There it is again. He brought them forth therefore with silver and gold. And now notice, I like this last part. And there was not what? A feeble person among their tribes. Not a feeble person among their tribes. When God when you, start, when you start to have confidence in God, when you start having confidence in His Word, you're going to be, you're going to be raised to a, a, a higher level of faith. Amen? Because now you're starting to see through the eyes of God how God sees. See, God created you a man in His own image and after His likeness. God created Adam as a man of faith. See, Adam was a spirit being just like God. You are a spirit being just like God. You just live in a house. Amen. What house are you talking about? I'm talking about this body. It's your house. But you are a spirit just like God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God wants you to start acting like him. See, when you, when God brings you out, when you experience one miracle, the devil know you don't start getting a hold of that thing. And when you start getting a hold of how to live the lifestyle of faith, you're going to find out that all the things that seem to be impossible for you all of a sudden have become possible for you. Because you're not, you're not trying to get them through the arm of the flesh. You're not trying to get them from the natural standpoint. You're looking at it from the spiritual standpoint. And you're going after it by the, you're going after it in the spirit realm. You're laying hold to it in the spirit realm. Well, how do you do that? Well, let's turn to Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. Hallelujah. Y'all get anything out of this? Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but let's go there anyway. Hebrew 11, verse 1. See, now, God has called us to live to a lifestyle of faith. And so he want he us, us to understand that if he's called us to a lifestyle of faith, there's a reason for it. You see, he is calling us to be like him. When you start to understand faith, you're going to start, I mean, your whole lifestyle is going to change. You're going to start talking like God. You're going to start walking like God. You're going to start acting like God. Amen. How, how is that possible? Because he's on the inside of you. Everything that he is is on the inside of you. And if the devil can keep you from seeing that, he can keep you living a defeated life. He can keep you boggled up in your mind thinking that you are nothing. But the moment you come to the knowledge of who you are and begin to believe who you are in Christ Jesus, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that the day you're going to begin to walk free from your bondage of this world. And I'm telling you what I'm learning myself. I'm not talking to you. I'm, not, I'm telling you what I've experienced and what I'm experiencing right now. Because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my life right now. I'm pouring out my life right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So there's, 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 there's some things we gotta, that we're going to be prepared for. There's some things that, that we got to look for. Number one. We got to understand the importance of faith. We have to understand the importance of faith. Faith is very important because God sees it's important. Okay? Number one is the importance of faith. And number two, 
what is faith and how does it come? What is faith and how does it come? And number three, oh, number three, how does it come? Number four, without faith, can we please God? Can we please God? Amen. So let's start at number one. Number one said the importance of faith. The, how, how important faith is. Let's look at, let's look at uh, Hebrew chapter 11. Now look at verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. See, it's so important that if I don't have it, I can't please God. That's how important faith is. If I don't have faith, it's impossible for me to please God. If you don't have faith, it's impossible for you to please God. And that's why it's so important for me. That's why I'm on a mandate right now to get you to the to to get you to come to an understanding. What do you mean come to an understanding? When you come to an understanding, there's knowledge. And what what that knowledge does it is it reveals. Amen. It opens up your eyes of understanding. To help you to see who you really are. So, number one, importance. Without faith, it's impossible to, to please God. So, faith is so much important that we got to have it to please God. Number two, what is faith? What is faith? Now, look at, so we can look at, uh, we can put uh, 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 verse number six by, by number one. And number two, let's put Verse number 1. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Or you might say the title deed to your... Faith is a title deed. It could be like a title deed. Title deed to what? To your eternity. To your uh, eternal mansion. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he said faith... Faith, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? So, faith is, faith is always looking at something beyond the natural. In other words, your natural, carnal reasoning will not be able to understand what we're talking about because we, we are, God is taking us beyond the human reasoning. Faith is taking you beyond the human reasoning. And faith will bring you to a place where you begin to see yourself totally different than what you've ever saw, the way, the way you ever saw yourself. Hallelujah. Because faith is going to take a hold to something that you can't see. But it's, but it's, but it's there because it has substance. You understand what I'm saying? You can't see it, but it has substance. If it has substance, that means it's, 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 it's available. It's, 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 it's it, it, I can have, I can, I can, I can, I can uh, obtain it. Now, if it didn't have no substance, then it would be something that I, that I can't obtain. But because it has substance, I can obtain it. You understand what I'm saying? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It has substance, and I can obtain it, but you know what? I still can't see it with the natural. That's why it's so important that we come out of the natural into the spirit so we can see what God is restoring, what God is preparing for us. Amen. Because see, somebody may be want somebody may be walking around and they're having difficulties, or you might be looking for something, then all and now. You 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 you're trying to figure out how you're going to get it, and God said, "Release your faith and believe for it." But God, how can I believe for something I can't see? If I can't see, what's the use of me trying to believe for it? Well, that's what Thomas did. Except I can see the nail prints of his hand and put my finger to the nail prints of his hand and thrust my hand into his side, 
He said, I will not believe. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. You see, it's not based on what, faith is not based on what you can see. Based, faith is believed, is based on, on, is based on things that you can't see. Amen. Because faith is looking for something that only God can release. And it's something you can't see God, but you know he's there. You can't see your brain, but you know, do you, do you, do you know, do you know you have one up there? You can't even see your heart, but how, but don't you believe you have a heart in your chest that pumps the blood throughout your body? Has anyone ever seen a kidney? <laughs> but you know you got one, unless it's been cut out. Amen? We don't see these things, but yet we believe they're in there. Amen? So why is it so hard for us to believe that God wants to bring us to a, a realm in life where we will be able to rest without worry, without anxiety, without anxiousness. Because when you got faith, you can lay down in peace because you're not worried about nothing. You're not worried about your light bill. You're not worried about your rent. You're not worried about paying your bills. Why? Because your faith is going to, your faith is working and that money is coming. Amen. Amen. Faith is just like a foreign currency. It works everywhere. <laughs> I heard, I heard a, a, a preacher say that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Amen. And so, and so, so we see that, we see that God, is, God is trying to show us something here. Now, now notice what he said. Well, notice what I said. Number one, faith is important. Amen. Because without faith you can't please God. Hebrew 11, 6. And then we said, what is faith? Faith is a Hebrew 11, 1. Faith is such the things hoped for, the evidence things not seen. Now, how does it, how does faith come? Roman number 3. How does faith come? Roman 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Now, God is showing us this because he's telling us these is very important. These ingredients are very important because without them, you can't please him. You can't please him. Amen. You can't please him. Glory to God. Amen. Now, 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 let's, let's, just, let's, just do, let's just say something else here. Amen. Real faith, real faith has action. Real faith has action. What do you mean? See, when God told me to start this church, I didn't have, I didn't have, didn't have the money to start no church. Didn't have the money for the equipment. Didn't have the money for these chairs that you see in here. Didn't have the money for these cameras that you see in here. Didn't have money for this sound equipment. I didn't have money for this piano. Didn't have money for this organ. I didn't have money for none of this stuff. But faith has action. And all God is required for you to take what he has said and begin to walk on it. Begin to walk on that word that he said. That word that God said has every ingredient in it to bring about what God has given you to accomplish. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. My God. I remember one time when I was in, in I was on an evangelistic field and I was in Texas. And I done had a wreck in my car and, and I, my motor was, uh, uh, I had a wreck in my car and, uh, and, and, and I, didn't, I didn't like riding around in a beat up car. 
and I, and I was out there doing this revival. And, and, and uh, my car was kind of messing up on me after the head wreck and everything. And so this man, I, I don't preach a fiery hot message and on healing. And this old man sitting back at the back of the church back there, he had his oxygen tank with him, he had his tube around his head and up his nose and breathing through the ox breathing oxygen. And, I, and after I done prayed for everybody, I was walking out the door. He said, hey, preacher, what are you, uh, what are you, he said, come over to the house, I want to talk to you about something. And so I went over to his house, and uh, I was raising, no, let me back it up. I was raising money for a motor. The man had been gave me a car, and I was raising money for the motor. And I made a phone call to Alabama, and, and I thought, wow, after I made that phone call, I said, boy, I should, never should have made that phone call. But I made that phone call to Alabama, and, and, uh, and, uh, and I talked to this preacher, and his, he was sitting there talking to me on the phone, and then his wife passed him. I saw it in the spirit. His wife passed him while he was talking to me. She passed by him going into the bathroom. Then all of a sudden, she stopped in her tracks. And she told her husband God, what God said. And then, and in my spirit, I know God had said something. So I said, well, what did God say, preacher? And he said, but, but Brother Larry, I never said nothing like this to you before. I said, but what did God say? He said, okay. He said, well, God told me to tell you to wire us, to, to wire me $250. I said, oh. <laughs> I said it just like that. I said, whoa. <laughs> then I kind of laughed. And I said, well, I let me, I, I tell you what, uh, I, let me just see what, let me just see what I can do. I, I, I said, I'll call you back out the wire. I had to, I hurt up and got off that phone. <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. Amen. Amen. I didn't want to hear that. But now, faith is starting to take over now. Because, see, I've heard from God. Now, faith will either obey what is heard, or it won't obey what is heard. To not obey what is heard, it will bring me to a ruin. But to obey what I heard was to bring me to a level in a new, higher realm. Now, and so I called the man back after them count my money up and everything. I only had like $300, 300, $325 to be exact, I remember, and some change. And so I called the man back. I said, well, I'm going to put it in the mail and send it to you, and, and you'll be getting about a week or so. And then I said, well, I'll talk to you later. I hung the phone up. And then I come into such deep conviction because I don't deviate from what the Spirit of God said. You understand what I'm saying? What was I supposed to do? What did the Spirit of God tell me to do? Did he tell me to send it to me in the mail? Or did he tell me to, to let a hell of a come and pick it up and take it to him? No. He told me to do what? To wire it. And then I said, and then I said, well, Lord, that's going to cost me even more money. Then that's not going to leave me nothing. You know? I'm thinking about all next week, and I'm, and I'm trying to save money for a motor for my car and everything. And I'm thinking, what is this, God? Why are you asking me of this? Why not? You see what I got to do. And so I was under such deep conviction, so I called, I called him back. I said, hey, I said, hey, preacher. I called him by his name. I didn't call him preacher. I said, hey, preacher. I said, uh, you can go to Western Union. In about 35 to 40 minutes, you can pick up your money. And when I called him and, and told him that, within minutes, I had such peace come over me. And right now, I'm feeling the power of God all over me right now. Yeah. I mean, that my legs right now are starting to get weak. The anointing of God starting to rest upon me just by sharing it with you. Amen? Because, see, I stepped into a realm of faith like I've never walked in before. How I do it? By obeying God. Doing what God said instead of, instead of doing what I think I should do. Because, see, when I do what I want to do, what I've done, I have acted in rebellious. 
I have acted in disobedience. I have stopped God from moving on my behalf. Now the door has been opened for the enemy to come in and to devour. Amen. But instead, I called the man back and I said, you can go down to the bank, you can go out to the Western Union, wherever you got Western Union, Walmart or whatever, and you can pick up your money in 35 to 40 minutes. And I, and I got in my car and I went down to Western Union. Now I had to pay $30 just to send $250. Every hundred dollar costs fifty cent. Mister Fifty uh, costs twenty ten dollars. And so I'm thinking. I said, Lord, now what am I going to do? I said, I'm trying to save money for a motor. And so now I'm back in that same church again, preaching. And I'm preaching. I'm preaching a five minutes. I mean, healing people being healed, and people being delivered. And all of a sudden, after the service, I walked out through the back, and this man sitting back there. He said, Hey, preacher, come on to the house. And, uh, and I went over to the house, and he said, how's your car running? I said, it's just cluck, cluck, long. You can hear it about to throw a rod at any time. You can hear it when it crank it up. You can hear it beating the walls of the, of the motor. And then he said, I said, well, I was, I was saving up some money to get me a motor for it. And he said, where are you going to get a motor from? I said, I'm going to go to the junkyard and get a motor. I could get one down there for like three, dollars $400. He said, oh, no, preacher, you're a man of God. You out getting people saved and praying for people, getting them healed and stuff. You need a better motor than that. He said, "Hun, bring me the telephone book. He told his wife to bring the telephone book. And he got in the telephone book and he found General Motors. Because it was a Beard Park Avenue. So he called General Motors. And he said, I, I, I need a motor for, for such and such Park Avenue. Whoa, that's right. You too. <laughs> Amen. And so, he, and so he called General Motors, and he, he said, how much does it cost? And he, told, he gave the price of it, and so he wrote it down. And then he got, he said, honey, bring me a checkbook. And so he wrote a check out for over $2,000 for a brand new motor from General Motors. And he said, because you're a man of God doing all this right here, you don't need a motor from the junkyard. You need a motor that's going to, that you know that's going to last you. And this man, he said, uh -huh, take this right here. Now go, down to, now go down to the bank and buy your cashier check. Now here I go. I said, spend more money? <laughs> I'm, 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 I got a big check in my hand. I'm still crying about spending $10 more dollars. <laughs> because it cost me $10 to buy a cashier check. But at the same time, I was getting a brand new motor. Amen. How did that happen? By acting in obedience to God, walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. Doing what God said through simple obedience, walking by faith and not by sight. Friend, I'm telling you, God want to bring you out of your situation. God want to lift you up out of that muckety marred clay. God want to place your feet on a solid foundation where you will never sink again. You may stumble, you may fall, but you won't lay down and wallow in the mire. You'll get up and you'll dust yourself off. You'll start, you'll start all over again. God has called us to a lifestyle of faith. We can't live in this life like we've been and thinking that it's going to be alright. We're coming closer and closer to the end times. And we, as the people of God, we got to start living like God, talking like God, walking like God, doing what God said to do, getting the results that God wants us to have. And friend, we can't get it from a natural standpoint. We can only get it when we walk it by faith. God bless you. Thank you all for joining me today. I've enjoyed bringing you this message, and we're going to take it up again on next Wednesday night. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I release your anointing right now. I release your anointing right now. Father, you know what? Oh, shit came out a lot about time. You know, when I... When I'm preaching on faith, the spirit of faith is being, the spirit of faith is working with me. Amen. 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 The spirit of faith is working with me. And when I'm speaking, I'm imparting, I, there's impartations coming, coming forth. Amen. Impartations are coming forth. Amen. Amen. Because God has placed a mandate on my heart to build your hearts, to establish you in faith, trusting God. See, you don't need to go to the doctor. Unless you don't have faith, you must go to the doctor. 
You have to do what you got to do. But if you have faith, you can say to that sickness, be healed in Jesus' name. You can speak to that situation, be moved now in Jesus' name. You can speak, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, be thou removed, be thou plucked into the sea, cast into the sea. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to be done. Why? Because your faith, it overrides the natural laws. Faith opens up the door to the supernatural. It overrides the natural laws. You have to understand God is calling us to a lifestyle of faith. Now, Father, I release that faith, the spirit of faith right now upon your people. Those that are in, in, in the sanctuary with me right now, Father, and those that are listening by the Internet, I release the spirit of faith right now, Father, and I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch, that you would move in a supernatural way upon the heart of your people. Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name, let every demonic force that have been coming against your people right now, let it cease in Jesus' name. And Father, I release my faith now, and I declare, and I decree healing, deliverance, manifest now in this place, in their minds and in their hearts, their will, their emotions, be free in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Father. What the devil has meant for evil, God, the people are going to experience relief. And it shall be again today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all get anything out of this tonight? Oh, that's more. I didn't get a chance to go over all of my notes. I still got a half a page of notes that I didn't get a chance to go over. Amen. We're going to prepare right now to give in, to give a, 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 an offering to the Lord. Amen. The Bible says for us to give, and it shall be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. For with the same measure that we meet with all, it shall be measured to us again. He that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. He that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. For God loveth the cheerful giver. Amen. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. You always have an all sufficiency in all things. May abound to every good work. The God that we serve is a supernatural God. And he's wanting to do a supernatural work in your life. Are you ready to walk in obedience to him? Are you ready to honor him in every area of your life? Are you willing to submit to him? Amen. Are you willing to submit to his will? Glory to God. Because there is where your deliverance are. In your submission to the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants to do something in your life, and he wants to take you beyond the natural. He wants to cause you to walk in that realm of the Spirit like you never walked before. Are you ready? Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Take this here. Put that in the offering bucket. Amen. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this tithes and for this offering. I bless this offering in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God, that all things do work together for good to them that love you. I bless this offering, Father. And may your will and your purpose be manifest in the lives of your people because of their obedience. I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Now, Father, I bless my daughter, Elizabeth. I release your anointing right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for your divine health and healing resting upon her 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the days of her life. She walk in divine health. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, for Lydia 
And Lord God, I thank you today that she will walk in divine health, that she will walk in divine health every day of her life, Father, and the kingdom of God will be made manifest in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And as we walk in that knowledge, oh God, wisdom will begin to manifest and knowledge will begin to unfold like never before. And your kingdom shall come in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go, go. Go to mama. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that your word is alive and health and healing to all our flesh. And as I lay hands upon this man, Father, I break every demonic force that has come against his mind, that has come against his brain, his heart, his emotions, his will. Father, I counsel every assignment now in the spirit that have come against his life in Jesus' name. I break it off him now and I loosen from the snare of the fowler in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release your anointing of restoration. Restore, Lord God. I ask this in Jesus' name. And let his mind, and let his heart be at peace. I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take the cap off. Okay, so what do you want me to pray about? I'd like you to pray for my brother's health. Okay. That he survives no. past 60. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Michael, Edward's brother. I pray, Father, right now, and I release your miracle working power in Michael's back spine right now, in his spinal cord right now, in the name of Jesus. Every crushed disc vertebrae, I speak restoration to it. Be restored in Jesus' name. And Father, let this be as a sign and a wonder. And I give you glory for it now. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Then let us all stand up. And... Father, we thank you for this time together this evening. We thank you for your word that has gone forth. God, we thank you for the, the message of faith. And God, you called us to a lifestyle of faith. We choose to walk and live in that realm. And God, as we do, you're going to do the things in our life that we only dreamed of. We thank you, Father, that you've given us, you bring us to the life of the impossible, being made possible to us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. I be blessing over your people. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us today. Did you give the did you get the television time to catch up? Did you had cut everything off?
I want to thank you all for joining us today here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church, and I pray that this message was a blessing to your life as well as was those here in the sanctuary. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.